Hello everyone, welcome back <clears throat> to another episode from Cynical Enigma. This is going to be a little different. I'm going to be giving you guys a couple of uh, tips. Um, so you can probably call this the tips and tricks from Cynical Enigma when you go out game hunting. Um, first of all, I'm going to start out telling you a little bit how I got into retro gaming and then we'll go on from there. Um, basically, how it started for me when... Uh, I got my first apartment back in 2007. I went out to Goodwill to start looking for stuff for my place and I came across <coughs> a virtual boy complete in the box with everything um, including the Mario Tennis or the tennis game that came with the virtual boy and it was only seven dollars and it said as is on the box so I took a chance on it. I was going to test it out there, but I didn't feel like taking everything out and testing it. So I took a chance on it, bought it, took it back to my place, tried it out, and it worked well. Like It worked like it was new. And um, from then on, I started um, buying old video games and, and systems. I knew someone that worked at a, at a certain place where he would go and pick the stuff up and bring it to the workplace that he worked at but before he would like take it back he'd make a trip to his place and take out some of the stuff and uh, he would sell the games to me and the games and systems that he would get and out of that I got two Sega CDs two Sega Genesis um, systems, a Super Nintendo and like a, one of them milk crates full of games uh, including for the Super Nintendo for the I think there are a couple of PS1 games in there too if I'm not mistaken and uh, Sega Genesis games, Sega CD games all that stuff and I didn't pay like over 60 bucks for it all and that's uh, another thing that really got me into collecting like hardcore well not hardcore but I don't go out like every day or whatever but uh, back then it was a nice start to my collection and from then on like uh, maybe three to six months after that there was a new store opening up in my town called Triple Play they mostly sold uh, sports cards, magic cards, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards and all that and then they started selling retro games so I went there and all of their games whether it was in the box or if it was loose it was $7.99 or up and mostly the, all the games that I got from there were complete in the box for about eight bucks each and to me it was definitely worth it and they ended up going under which was sad because that was one of my favorite new game stores in town and uh, after that I started going to the pawn shops and realizing that pawn shops had really good deals on old video games from the Nintendo all the way up and yeah that's how my collection got built some of the stuff I had back in the day back in the 90's and stuff and uh, the other games and stuff that I have are recently bought within the time period from 2007 to now um, but yeah anyway let's get on with the tips the reason of this video <coughs> got my little list here Alright, this is tips and tricks for game hunting. Number one, never go out expecting to find games every time. Um, if you do this, it's a big letdown and it'll make you want to stop. I've gone through it. Um, I don't know how many of, of you have gone through it. <clears throat> but when I go out, I never expect to find anything. I always have an open mind. That's when I usually um, get the hit or get the miss. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> what, what, even if I don't get anything I still have fun while I'm doing it because I'm either with uh, one of my brothers or just on a bike ride for the exercise um, number two don't let it consume all of your free time um, never like basically set a time um, to go out and do this maybe like for an hour or so maybe you know, it depends on how how often you get paid or how much free time you can have besides work. Number three, set a spending limit each week. 
don't let it consume all of the all of your money that you could be setting aside for something else like buying groceries or fixing your car or stuff like that um, I personally never had any trouble with setting a spending limit each week my limit is about I'd, have, I'd probably say about forty to fifty dollars a week um, and it lasts me throughout the whole week as well um, basically I usually go out game hunting Fridays and Saturdays and maybe Sundays, depending on what's open. Um, number four, like EDT1138 says, never make it a job to find games. Do it for fun. Now, if you try to make this a job, it's going to get boring and you're not going to want to do it anymore. Uh, I've, know, I've known a couple of people that did that and they just had no interest in it anymore. <coughs> And, yeah, and, and it really sucks too because they're really good friends of mine on YouTube. And uh, let's see, number five. If games are found behind glass cases, always ask to check the discs to make sure they are in, uh, they are there and in great condition. This has happened to me quite a few times actually, where I would. Uh, buy a couple of games behind a gl glass case I didn't ask to, to look inside the case to see if the game was there or if it was in playable condition and I ended up getting screwed and we all know once you buy something from Goodwill or a thrift store you can't take it back to get your money back or credit alright number six always look inside a disc based system to see if there is a game in it Basically, if you go out and you find a PlayStation 1 or the Sega Saturn and you see a game inside of it that you really want to get and the system is cheap enough to where you can afford it, then pick it up and don't say nothing about the game being inside. Um, I've come across a PS1 for $2 for 2 or 3 bucks that had, I believe, Fighting Force in it or Fighting Force 2. And it's a game that I really wanted to get, and I uh, picked up the system just for the game, and now I have an extra system. I have to probably say I have three original PS1s, no, two original PS1s, and two PS1 Slims. Alrighty, moving on. Number seven, if you ever find a game with no price, never ask how much they want for it. You offer them a price so they know your price range. So basically, it, let's say you find uh, Conker's Bad for a Day at Goodwill with no price on it. You ask them if you can look at it. And if there's no price on the front, back, or the top section of the game, you ask, well, would you take like three bucks for it or two bucks? This way you can give them an idea on what you're willing to spend or what you can afford. Um, I've done that before and it's worked. All right. Number eight, never hesitate to ask at garage sales if they have any old video games. Um, before, when I started out garage selling back in 2010, uh, sometimes I would always hesitate to ask if they have old video games when there would be like nothing but clothes or baby clothes or baby toys or kids toys. Um, but I've done this quite a few times now and it's worked to a certain extent. Um, it's only worked once so far. The second time, I asked this lady if they had any old video games, and her neighbor overheard me. And she said, "Yeah, we have some. You know, give me your phone number, and when we go through our basement and we find them, we'll give you a call back." And she has never never given me a call back yet. So sometimes it's a hit and miss with that kind of thing. Um, number nine, don't be afraid to ask to go lower on a game anywhere. Even if it's uh, good, well, Goodwill probably usually has a set price, but usually when you go to a thrift store, or pawn shop, or uh, good, no, not Goodwill. Why did I say Goodwill? Or uh, garage sales, you know, just ask them if they'll like, uh, if you see a game there or a bundle of games for like ten bucks and you only have like five or seven dollars on you, ask them. Just be like, oh, here's this is all I have. Will you take this? And they'll usually say yes, just to get rid of it, because um, they usually don't need the space for what they would call junk. You know what I'm saying? Um, but moving on, number 10. Have fun hunting. 
Like like I said before, never make it a job or else it will get boring and you will stop uh, collecting video games. And never spend too much money a week on uh, game hunting. Basically set aside uh, a set amount for each week along with a set time where you can go out and go game hunting for about an hour or so. Um, you always want to have that thrill of the hunt always with you no matter what. That's what I always that's what I always uh, savor every time I go out and if I find something big I savor it. Um, Alright guys um, this is about it. Uh, be on the lookout for my next pickups video. It'll probably be sometime this week or this weekend. Uh, let's just say I got some really really rare pickups to show you guys. And uh, if you, in case if you haven't noticed, if you can see out to the corner of, this, of their uh, right hand of the, I think it's the right hand, right, right, it may be to the left, maybe the right, I don't know. But I got a new TV, a 30 inch TV, I'm so happy, it looks so much better in my game room. It's much, much bigger than my old uh, 20 inch was and it it's, fits perfectly in here. Um, the only thing that sucks is that it doesn't have the the audio cables so where I can hook it up to my receiver so I had to bring my VCR for my living room in here but it still works perfectly good um, the colors are more vibrant brighter and everything so I'm really happy with that uh, this will be out in my pickups video as well and I will see you guys the next pickups video coming up shortly I also got to do a video response to ROP 78's contest. I will get that in as soon as I can. Possibly today. I'm going to try to get it in today after this video. Alright, this is Cynical Enigma signing off, saying keeping it retro, 90s style. Peace. Rise,